Hello everyone, I want to read a little bit to you. I'm going to be in the 20, 20th chapter of John, and I'm going to start about the 18th verse, and I'm going to flip over and read one verse from another place. But uh, the time is when Jesus has come back to earth after his crucifixion for a few days, and it says, Mary Magdalene, I'm in verse 18, John 20. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and he had spoken these things unto her. Then at the same, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Uh, they were f afraid. Jesus had died. Their, their leader it was so uncertain time about what they were going to do. It reminds me of the day we were in right here with the coronavirus. We, we've we never been here before. We're all trying to dis discern what we need to do. And they were afraid. And we're, we are afraid uh, if we don't let God take control. I said the other day that when I was talking about imagination, fear stands for false evidence appearing real. God is the real thing. and All the rest of it is going to be passing away. Then he said, and when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. The peace be unto you didn't have the right effect, the total effect. So he had to show them his hands and side. Uh, sometimes these young people, when when you say, well, just, you know, peace be unto you, everything going to be all right kind of thing, they, and you're trying to talk to them, they need someone to show them their wounds. Um, I've got wounds. I, 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 we, we tell our testimonies where everything goes right, everything's good. That's the ones we repeat on the floor. But our personal testimonies uh, where we struggled, we, we kind of reserve them. Uh, but I want young people to know that whatever you're going through, it's I and a lot of the older people have been right down that road. Uh, and I believe that if a young person comes to me and is talking to me, I need to, or whoever is talking to me, I need to make it confidential. And I sure have tried to do that. So then Jesus said to them again, peace be unto you as my father sent me. Even so send I you. And so when he had, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Isn't that something to miss? He missed that first meeting. You know that you don't want to miss a meeting. Uh, I know when I was in school, people say, well, I missed and the word of God came all right, but it wasn't to me. I, I, I disagree. When I was in school and I missed a class, uh, I was required to catch up to uh, know, the, know the material. And the other disciples said unto him, we have seen the Lord, but he said, except I see the nail print, nail, see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. But And let me back up that one verse. But Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. I don't know uh, if Didymus was a... Um, it, 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 I looked it up, it means twin. I don't know if Thomas was a twin or if he just had a dual nature within himself like everybody else. You know, the Indian father told the Indian son, there's two wolves within you, a good one and a bad one, and they're, and they're fighting to see who's going to win. The Indian son said, who's going to win, Father? And he said, the one that you feed. Uh, uh, but Thomas was not always an unbeliever. He, 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 he wasn't a doubter all the time. And I'm going to uh, go back over here to John 11, uh, verse 16, and this says, Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, and to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Now, he said Thomas, that was called Didymus, so he wanted us to know that it was the same one. 
And uh, that didn't sound like a doubter. He said that he was prepared to go die. I think that's the dual nature of a man. There's a flesh and a spirit, and they're, they're warring against each other. Uh, so in our church, we've got some people with the last name Thomas that goes to church with his brother Toby Thomas and some of his family. And then we got uh, people that go to church with us. Their first name is Thomas, Brother Tom, Thomas Avins, Tom Avins. And uh, I kid them about being Doubting Thomases. And, uh, you know, he missed that service, that very important service. Uh, what if it, maybe when the time changed to the fast time, we had a meeting and somebody didn't set the clock and they came up. I had just preached something. And they said, uh, would you preach it over again to us? Uh, you miss you miss something uh, that it's hard to recover. Uh, they called him Doubting Thomas, and he didn't doubt over there in the other chapter that uh, verse that I read to you. Uh, they they Jesus healed a lot of blind men, and they call him the blind man, the crippled man, or whatever the situation. Uh, the blind man might have been able to hear real good. He might have been a you might have could have called him a good friend but not the blind man. But you ever get a label or a tag hung on you, it's hard to get that removed. And so uh, I know uh, Jacob, God changed people's names for the good. Jacob became Israel. Uh, Abraham became Abram. Uh, Paul became, Saul became Paul. Simon became Peter. That's fine, but you don't want to be like Naomi, uh, which meant my joy. And she said, don't call me that. I, I went out em uh, full and I came back empty. She said, call me Mara, which means bitterness. Don't let somebody change your name. I heard in high school, I heard a this hand said, I could have a good time in this life, but everywhere I go, there I am also. There, that part of you is that messes things up. Uh, I saw a fiction, I think I told you on another video, a program once, and this man, he was a mousy little man, and, and uh, he looked in the mirror, and there was a bold version of himself in there, and the bold version was talking to the mousy guy and said, I'm coming out of here, I'm putting you in here, I'm tired of you messing everything, messing everything up, uh, and, and that happened. Uh, but I think that all of us has a bold person within us. There's a poor person within me that's so merciful, so loving, and then there's one that I try to keep in the in the background that's judgmental and that doesn't have much mercy. Uh, there's a brave one in here. You know, uh, fear, I told you, um, it's false evidence appearing real, F-E-A-R, um, we have to keep the, who, there's, somebody's going to be in charge. One of yourselves is going to be in charge. Who are you going to let be in charge? The one that looks positive and says we can make it uh, or the one that says, I don't know if we can make it. I don't know if I can make it. don't know if anybody else can at all uh, either. Like the, the 12 spies that they sent out to come back with a positive report. Uh, I remember the first time I read in church. Uh, probably uh, about 1992 or something like that, and uh, maybe 91, whatever it was. And I had to wrestle with that. Uh, the Lord had put a scripture on me, and I, I, I was I chickened out. So I got to feeling bad. I don't know how many days went by, and I said, Lord, if you'll let that happen uh, again, and the next time it happened, when I got up, it would, I guess the first time it would have really went over good. But the second time, it was no fanfare. Nobody said nothing. But I knew I had to do that. And it says, uh, uh, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me and thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. I know that when David, I believe it was the time he was at Ziklag, and I mentioned this on another video, uh, they they talked of stoning David, and it said David encouraged himself. 
friends, brothers, sisters, don't wait on somebody to call you and encourage you every morning. You call somebody and encourage them. Um, it, it would be great if somebody called me every morning in, with encouragement. But it's my job to keep my mind up above that line and positive. Um, so I just wanted to tell you to let the right man in charge. Who are you going to let be in charge? Only you can make that decision. And I want that loving, positive-minded, uh, looking for the good type person. I want to be somebody that can help somebody. I want to be able to make a difference in this life. So hopefully you got something out of that. I'll close for now. May God bless you until I see you again.